Good. Now, NoSQL is a form of a database, like a type of database. Um, I think in Dev3, you will see MySQL, the regular database, as in having to uh, make tables, make rows, make schemas, make very rigid structures. It's a very common database, uh, but there are others. And one of the most popular types of databases in web is NoSQL. Now, what do I mean by NoSQL? It is not only SQL, so there are more types of it. It's also non-relational. Um, so we have no relation between different tables, uh, or as we will come to know them as collections. In a regular database, in MySQL, you have that. For example, you have a user, you have a table with multiple rows for each user. You have an address table with multiple addresses for, for each uh, multiple addresses. And then, of course, the user Mike has the ID of one for an address, which means that in the table of addresses, my address is uh, there located there under ID one. Why would we do that? For example, my wife, if she also is a user, she will have the same ID because she lives on the same um, location as me. Okay, so that's that's how to prevent dummy data and duplicate data. So th that's what I mean uh, with relations between tables. So the concept, of course, NoSQL has been around for quite some time, but it's way more used now. It's it, it's uh, beginning to well beginning. It is already popular enough by the likes of tools like uh, Mongo and Firebase. Again. Firebase, you have used that last year. Firebase is not a database. Firebase is a product of Google. That's something else. Um, Firebase has multiple things. One of them is real-time database and cloud storage. Both of those are cloud databases. We are not gonna be using that today. Why? Because I do not want you to only have experienced the Firebase way of saving data. Locking you to one ecosystem, looking at you, Apple, is not a good thing. So you should be able to be freely and work with any type of database that you want in the future. And of course, uh, just know the, the principles behind it. It's mostly used for real-time applications, as we will see in a second. What are the advantages? It's very simple in design. It's horizontal scaling as you can create as much as you can without really having too much trouble. M MySQL is a bit more rigid in design. And it's close to object-oriented coding, so it's easier. Why? Because the data you're saving is mostly of the type of JSON. And again, what have, be, what have we been working with for all this time is JSON, is JavaScript objects. Again, JavaScript is uh, love, JavaScript is life. So JSON files is what we like. Disadvantages, of course, no joins and standardized interfaces. Uh, it's more loosey-goosey, uh, but it, that just means that it's up to the, to the developer to keep the database tidy, okay? So you have to make sure that you're not making a mess of it, which will happen, by the way, but still. <laughs> what types of databases do we have? Uh, or what types of data structures? Uh, of course, NoSQL is a collection name for it, but there are different ways of working with the data. The one we are going to be using is document-based. It's data collected in a document. So just like a table and a row, we have a document per row. So one document for one user, one document for one address, etc., etc. Think of a document as an object of a class. You have the class of user, which has all the definitions. And then each time you need a new user, you, need, you make a new ob object. The same logic exists for persistent databases. You have a table or a collection that defines the user, and then you have a document for each user you want to put in there. And the formats we're gonna use is JSON XML. We're not gonna be using XML, we're gonna be using JSON, which is the leading um, format for this type of databases. We also have graph databases. Graph databases, some of you wanted to use a specific API that has GraphQL, uh, which is a graph query language or graph database. It's very much um, a different beast. Uh, it's something that you can link, uh, keep linking 
through. Uh, what I mean by that is that if you select a user, in that user there's an ID for an address, you can link through it in code to keep building on that query. So get the address, then from that address, get the city, get the city, get the city. I wanna get all the address addresses in the city in my database. Again, link through. Then for all those addresses, I wanna get the user. Again, link through. And you're creating this one massive link in your database based on logic. Um, it's not something we're going to use. I have very basic knowledge of it. I would also just use uh, documentation, of course, to use it. But again, it's, it's a different beast. It's mostly used for data science scientists. Uh, if they want to have logic, like uh, I want all the people who are this age and live in that place. And then for that place, I want, again, all the people below that age and etc. etc. Key value pairs, those who are choosing backends will have uh, will work a lot with that because that's the leading <laughs> data structure in PHP. It just means that you have a key, name, and you have a value, Mike. And it stores everything in that type of way. So it's it's an it's also what would you call an associative array. So name, Mike, age, as always, left, right, left, right. That's a, an associative array. Then a white column is just very few tables, but with large amounts of columns. So again, about columns a bit later. Document-based storage is what we are gonna use. It's very popular in JavaScript. One document is one object and the format is JSON. So you already know that. The board game you've, you've been using is JSON. Uh, so like the, the board game file. Every document can be different. For example, I may wanna show this, but I think you know, in board games, I can, I can just do this. Uh, no, well, not, not in board games, but like in a JSON file. It doesn't matter that this object is different than this object, that it doesn't care about that. So in our database, it doesn't care about that either. So that's what I mean with it's not, um, the, the, there can be different properties. Also, if I were to, uh, if I were to do this, players four is best for example but the other one has this which is very different for example give me all the board games that have four players well i just do this if number is equal to four as a number then this board game is okay but this will just crash because it's a string. So this is what I meant with a disadvantage. You have to make sure that your data is consistent. If you use a number, an integer, for a property, then use it everywhere as an integer. If you use a description that you're going to be placing on your, um, on your, uh, come on, on your website, then use a description. But use a description everywhere for the same property. All right. So 30 is not equal to 30. Um, retrieve and find documents. You can get the documents from your database by ID or an actual query. We will see demos of query later. There are multiple document-based storage solutions. Of course, Mongo is the one we're gonna use. We have CouchDB and of course we have the Google Firebase platform. So since you already know how to work with Firebase, we are not gonna be using it and it's also not allowed to be used as a course project. We are gonna be using the cloud version of Mongo. Now why Mongo? It's written in C++, so for the, ner for the nerds uh, among you, it's very fast, it's very good. It's used in large companies, large enterprise projects. It's very popular by uh, by that standard. And of course, lots of plugins and a large code base. So there's, there's a very big community that has lots of doc documentation on it. It has auto sharding and replication. So sharding is spreading data over instances. An instance can be a thing that runs on a PC in New Zealand and then on a PC in Japan and on a PC in Belgium. That's spreading the data. It's on different places. Then at the same time, that's spreading the data. At the same time, you can add replication to MongoDB, it's one of, one of their more popular features, is that if you, from somewhere, if you save data, it automatically internally duplicates that data to different databases or different instances. So that with an outage, you can easily switch to a different instance and have no issues. Also high availability, 
uh, of course, they have lots of fail systems. It needs to, of course, because uh, servers, uh, enterprise software from all around the world is counting on that. Now, of course, MySQL also has that. It's just a bit more rigid. Uh, like uh, if um, MySQL is like the stern old guy that has proven methods and will not deviate from its methods. It's slowly catching up while MongoDB is, is like the hip younger child that wants to try new things. So it has been it it, 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 it has been a staple in web development for years now. So it stores documents like JSON uh, in JSON format. It has a dynamic scheme. Now, of course, you ha you haven't seen SQL, so you don't even know what a scheme is. A scheme, schema, scheme is basically the definition of how your database is looking. In MySQL, you have to define, I have a user table, I have an address table, I have a credentials table holding the password and the, the, the username, and the, the credentials table and the address table are linked to these fields specifically of the user table. That's a scheme. It says, this is how it should be linked. This is how you do it. If you wanna delete something from the address and it's still linked to a user, you cannot do it. I will not allow it. I will throw back an error. MongoDB has a dynamic scheme. You do not need to define the structure of a document up front. We have our board games. We do not have to say that each board game has name, genre, me mechanisms, and description. You can just put something in there with, with just a name. MongoDB doesn't care. Structure is mutable. Like I said, adding and deleting fields is always possible. And you can easily store arrays and other complex structures like you see here. Of course, this is an array. It doesn't care that it's an array. This is valid JSON, so I can save the JSON. Some naming terms. If you eventually learn SQL, this will become more relatable. But a table is, uh, of course, the instance. If you were to look at object-oriented programming, a table would be the class. So that's the definition. That's where all the data is stored. So the one table is called in MongoDB a collection. For example, user. A row. A row is an instance of that user. So each row is a different user. We have uh, Mike, Pim, Nadia, Alex, uh, etc. For example, each row is different credentials. In MongoDB, we call that a document. A column is the data of that row. So for example, our row for user has three columns, name, age, and email. So of course, for each column, for each row, it will have a different value. We have name Mike for my row, name Nadia for, for, the, for the row of Nadia, okay? A column in MongoDB is called a field. So basically a field like this. This is a field. And joins is the joining of data between each other. It's that, That's called uh, linking and embedding in MongoDB. Now, what do I mean by that? Is that they can, they can have relations to each other as long as it's appropriate. And it can be either embedded or referenced. Now, what do I mean by that? Embedded is if the data is located inside the document. So that means user, if I have, for example, here, uh, let me check. If I were to do this, uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. let me think. Eh? Mm. Oh, I have to ID one. the hell one uh, and then mechanism or genre do I have genre yeah genre 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 uh, thematic oh, come on thematic This is embedded, which means if I have a game that is thematic and strategy, then I have to type it out here. And when I get this object, I automatically get thematic back. Now, what if we have, we have some duplicate data, of course, I just saw. 
we have, of course, both Terra Mystica and Fuche Magnet are both strategy games. So in this case, even if it's small, we have duplicate data. We have the same string, as you can see here, we have the same string in both objects, in both different documents. This is embedded. If we want to be linked, then we would do this. Then I would do this. I would place the ID to um, actually another object in a different table. This is linking. That's the difference. Up. Okay. This is also a very, a very easy way of, of showing it. Um, so we have an embedded link where the address is actually inside the object of the France. And then of course we have a referenced one where there's only IDs and then that ID will be in, um, in a different collection. Okay. We are going to be using Mongo Atlas cloud. Why? Because last year I worked with the servers from school. Uh, if it's down, uh, then yeah, then you're, you're screwed. <laughs> and this way the, the cloud will, will stay up. Of course, if you go to a different location, your database will always be running. And if you have, um, uh, hold on, you're, you're the master of your own database. So that's what we are going to be using. In MongoDB, in Node, we will have the official NPM package. We will see that in a second. And of course, I'm gonna give you a demo right now. 